Okay, guys, this is awesome. Like, so we are going, we are here. I am here with the, with the incomparable Petrick and Sarah. And we're going to talk about uh, an underrated anime, I think, in our opinions, an under, an underreported, an under discussed anime uh, called Code Geass, which is freaking awesome. Um, I actually watched Code Geass last year, like right as I began BookTube and filmed reviews of both seasons and then just, like by the time I was going to edit them and put them out, I went to edit them and I'm like, this is not the way I review anything anymore. And it just wasn't, you know, still learning how to film videos. So I never put them up. And then uh, apparently Sarah, like recently was watching Code Geass and I was like, what? Why are we not talking about Code Geass? And Sarah's <laughs> like, Patrick told me to watch Code Geass. I'm like, what? Patrick seen Code Geass. <laughs> and so like we we're talking about Code Geass. And so now we're here to talk about uh, Code Geass. So, Patrick, when did you when did you last uh, watch Code Geass? I watched Code Geass uh, two times. So the first uh, the first one was really during the uh, the running the running dates. So yeah, I was uh, watching it even though even through the brutal cliffhanger of the first season. <laughs> so oh, I had yeah. to wait oh, for the yeah. second season. But yeah, after I finished that one a few years ago. I did rewatch it again, and it's as good as the first time I watched it. Awesome. And you know, I think uh, Code Geass uh, back then when it was it was still running, it was always talked about by a lot of the anime community. But back then, but now, well, it's, it has been I think almost a decade. I think since well, the it's two thousand seven, it ended. So it's been almost fifteen years. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I feel so old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fourteen years. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, so it it has been fourteen years since it, since uh, it's concluded, and I don't think a lot of people really talk about it now. But it is still, in my opinion, one of the greatest anime I have ever seen. One of the greatest, truly fantastic. No, I I completely agree. Like it is it is a revenge story for the ages. Like it is like it's Count of Monte Cristo level. Like it is so good. <laughs> Uh, and Sarah, you just recently watched it, like what last month, a couple months ago? I think it was I think it was last last month. And I think Patrick left out that he watched it vicariously through me and my <laughs> scintillating updates because every morning he would wake up and it would just be a wall of text like, I can't believe this happened. <laughs> That's, uh, that's why I don't have to reread the, um, I didn't have to reread the first three books of Babel because everyone reading them was all constantly like, this is happening, this is happening, Re uh, reliving the whole thing. It's good, it's good for a summary. But yes, it was about a month ago that I watched it and it was phenomenal. I can't believe I didn't watch it back then. I don't know how it passed me by. I had been hearing about it for forever. Um, when I went to, I went to Japan in 2008 and studied for a semester and I had heard about it then and I got it in a different anime, like confused. And I just, I don't know. I just never ended up watching it. And then until like on Netflix, I was like, I remember hearing this and I'm, so I'm gonna watch it. And oh my gosh, Patrick, I'm with you. It is so good. And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about it is because it, you guys, if you're watching and you're, you're part of the SFF like booktube community, like there is so much here for yeah. lovers of science fiction and fantasy. So many of the same things that you love in your science fiction and fantasy books is right here. And it's not 900 episodes like, like One Piece. It's like 50, <laughs> it's two like 25 episode seasons. Mm -hmm. It is, it's just, it's just so, it's so good. And, but we'll start, Sarah, you you watched it the most recently. What are some, we're gonna talk non-spoilers for a while. And then those of you who've seen it and have just been waiting to talk spoilers about Code Geass, like you're just like, oh my gosh, watch Code Geass 10 years ago. No one's ever seen it. No one ever wants to talk to me about it. This is the video for you. You just put <laughs> in the comments be like, yes, I agree. Screw that guy. But we'll talk non-spoilers on like kind of like what we what we like so much about this about the show. So Sarah, you can go ahead and start and I'll I'll bring up the rear here. Totally. So just, I guess I'll talk some why you should watch it as a science fiction fantasy fan, but then also as an anime fan. Um, like you said, Alan, it's a very manageable anime. So it's only 50 episodes to 25 episode seasons, which is really easy to watch when they're only 20 minutes long. It has a defined ending, which is always nice. You, you're not getting into something that you don't know if it's going to stretch into years or decades in the watching. Okay. 
<laughs> one piece. And what is important <laughs> to me or what I like is when there is kind of minimal fan service. Um, not the fan service is bad, but just in terms of my own personal taste, I like when it is lighter. And there is some in Kobe. There's, there's slightly more in season two. And in season two, there is slightly more. This is a comment that I made to Patrick. I was like, they definitely upped it. Like it, it clearly became popular and then they injected a little more fan service in there. Um, <laughs> but in, with Callum, yes. Yeah. But it is yeah, minimal. Callum. And it never like over it never overtakes the story or makes That's the characters true. act in ways that feel disingenuous to who they are. So I appreciate. Yeah, that. there's never yeah. the the slip and falls like oh I fell my skirt went up. There's none of those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but in terms of for science fiction fantasy fans, especially if you like modern sci-fi fantasy, where you appreciate a. <clears throat> complex character where there's a lot of moral grayness in both your villains and your protagonists if you like the the revenge plot if you enjoy really smart protagonists who actually make good decisions people who are flawed who are ruled by both their brain and their heart there's so much there's so many great tropes in this show and it, it everything that it does is phenomenal it is a show that i definitely hyped up to a bunch of people that i was talking to and each one who watched it said that it totally lived up to the hype it they said i didn't think it was possible for it to be as good as it is but it is that good and i agree mm -hmm. Yes, like, yes, like completely agree. Agree. With Lelouch, Lelouch being intelli intelligent, like intelligent protagonists, we are told that we've all seen this in science fiction fantasy books where we are told how smart a protagonist is or a villain is. And then they never actually do anything that evidences that. We're just told. It's like the, when we're told that characters are friends, but they don't actually ever act like friends. Mm -hmm. Lelouch, is, that is absolutely not here. Like he is as brilliant as he knows that he is, which makes him insufferable sometimes, but he <laughs> is as brilliant as he as he thinks he is. Uh, so Patrick, what do you like about it? Oh, there's so much to love here. <laughs> there's so much, but uh, I think the one that stood out to me the most is the characters. I mean, th thinking about it, like you said, it has been 14 years. Oh my God, <laughs> it has been 14 years and Lulu, his actions, a lot of his actions, his motivation still, remains so vivid in my mind mm -hmm. and you know the beginning of this uh the beginning of this anime it starts out like a lot of manga or a lot of uh asset of novels like this main character suddenly found out about this power and he decided to uh he, de he decided to do something with this power and he doesn't really have to if he doesn't want to <laughs> but he wants to make a better world for his sister that's his initial and well his thorough, thoroughly throughout the entire series. That's his main motivation. And I loved it. I think it gives color to his personality, even though he did a lot of bad things, but that remains his number one motivation. And that's only for Lulu's. There is still a lot of characters. So good, so good. Oh, I completely agree, Patrick. Like, guys, you don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm the characters, especially the especially the main, the main two characters who are yeah. friends. Like yeah. so the premise of Code Geass, guys, if you don't know, like the, the non-spoiler premise, everything, this is all within the first episode. Mm -hmm. Um, is there is there was there's the Brit Britannian Empire has kind of you know taken over um whatever. And Lelouch was like he's like the 11th prince of the Britannian Empire, and his mother who is one of the emperor's many, you know, several wives, um, is gunned down in front of him. And in so she's killed, and then his sister, Nunnally, is injured and loses her ability to walk, and she's blinded from, like, the trauma or whatever. And so his dad, the emperor, doesn't investigate his, his mom's death, and so they, they flee. He flees and grows up in Japan, um, at this shrine with this other little boy named Suzuku. And then there's the second uh, like Pacific War where Britannia takes over Japan. And because Japan resisted them, they have now, and this is one of the great themes in this, they have dehumanized the Japanese. They're, it's not even called Japan anymore. They have stripped their identity from these people. It's called Area 11, and the Japanese are called 11s. Like, they don't even get any kind of national identity. It's, it's, it's like... It's chilling and horrific. But so Suzuku and um, Lelouch, grew, they, they, you know, they go to uh, Ashford Academy, which is really expensive, like, you know, prep school, whatever. And so 
but Lelouch is, is like like uh, like Patrick says, he's he wants to build a better world for his sister, and he wants revenge on on the emperor, um, his 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 dad. And he gets this power called the Gius that commands ultimate obedience. It's this thing in his eye, so he keeps his eye covered. He un like when he does it, when he undoes it, like it goes into your face, and he can command you to do anything. Absolute obedience. Yeah. And he wants to use this to bring down the empire and make a better world for his sister. The unfortunate thing is his best friend Suzuku, who he grew up with, serves in the Imperial Army. And so this constant, like the struggle, you see these two best friends, Lelouch, who is this brilliant, like he, you know, he wants to take care of his sister. He'll do any, he will do anything. And you hear that a lot. Like people say, I'll do any, no, <laughs> Lelouch will do anything to protect his sister. Like sometimes you are like, oh my, you are a monster. Like, and Suzuku believes in, he believes that rebelling against the Imperials is not the way for, uh, for, for Area 11, for Japan to, you know, get its, get its uh, independence again. Like he, he wants to fix things from inside the empire, as opposed to Lelouch who wants to, boo, bring it down. Mm -hmm. And that puts them at odds and watching, and I love that, the best friends, like the best friends to who are on the opposite sides of the conflict, it's just so good. Their relationship is so good because they're so different. Because Suzuku is so unbending and like he's yeah. just morally righteous and unbending, and he's not gonna do anything to accomplish. Like there's lines he's not gonna cross where Lelouch may not have those. So those those characters are just fantastic, and that's just that's just the main two. That doesn't yeah. talk about all the others in the rebellion. Um, yeah. you know, but like all the Lelouch followers and it doesn't, um, talk about all of the, the, the Imperials. It's just, oh my gosh. It's just, it's just, so it's just one conflict of many and it yeah. is done really well. Absolutely. And you know, they're all so nuanced because Lelouch is, is brilliant. He's brilliant. And he still makes bad decisions because he gets emotional or yeah. he's, he makes a mistake or as we see like Lelouch also gets a little like he's a little arrogant he doesn't really want like he has he doesn't want other people to get the credit for what he's doing like you know um he's just lelouch is one of my favorite one of my favorite like protagonists in anime for sure like he's he, fantastic yeah. he's so and, good and people often mention right that they want a character that's smart that, that doesn't have any like noticeable physical abilities well this is it Lulitz doesn't have any physical power. That's right. He's the suckiest Gundam <laughs> pilot. Uh, sorry, it's not Gundam. It's uh, it's the robots, but they're called Nightmare Nightmare Frames in this. But I just it's a Gundam. Um, the Nightmare Frame. He is the worst He's robot awful. pilot. It's so hilarious. Like he is just this mastermind moving the pieces, and as soon as he gets in a freaking robot, like they beat the tar out of him. He sucks. He's, he can barely climb the stairs. Like when he's in gym class, it's just a disaster. He is always getting his mech like knocked out and having to be rescued. He sucks. <laughs> and that you're right, Patrick. Like that's something that you don't see. He's not yeah. good on the battlefield. He is a general. He is not a fighter. And mm. at some, I'm just like Lelouch. Stop. Stop oh, getting robot. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> He really uh, does. So what's y'all's opinion of Suzuku? Y'all talked about Lelouch. How do y'all feel about, about our boy Suzuku? I feel like it's hard to talk really about Suzuku without going into spoilers. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll put a pin in the Suzuku discussion then. It is because his, yeah. his character changes a lot. His motivations become clearer and clearer as the story, and he becomes more nuanced too. I think in the beginning, he's your typical white knight character. Yeah. He's the person that you're supposed to, to root for, uh, but that changes a lot as, as the show continues. I never rooted for Suzuku. I always <laughs> for Lelouch. I'm like, yes, Lelouch, get them, bring them down. <laughs> Imperials, get them. And uh, do you two actually love Mecha in your anime? I I, I like, like Mecha. I like Mecha. Um, yeah, I, I like the uh, Gundam really Wing. Love <laughs> like from the '90s, Gundam Wing, Zex Marquis was my was my guy. 
Do you not like Escaflone Escaflone? is my nostalgia mech anime. Escaflone. So good. Escaflone? <laughs> Escaflone, yes. I loved it. Escaflone. Uh, Patrick, do you like mecha? Yeah. I watch almost all Gundam. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I played the uh, Dynasty Warriors uh, Gundam, Gundam Gundam game where, where you're yeah, Gundams yeah. instead of, you know, the samurai or the warriors from the Three yeah. Kingdoms. Super fun. <laughs> Fun. I played that one too. Um, so what about the what about the other characters? We've got Callan, who is um kind of the 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 underling in the resistance under um under under Lelouch, and she's the best, like she's the best mecha pilot they have. She has the what's it called? I had it pulled up, the Gurin, right? Gurin, Gurin, yeah, she's yeah. a Gurin Mark II. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's just an incredible mecha pilot, and is she's she's in the rebellion because her like she's Japanese, um, yes. which is you know, most of the rebellion, they're Japanese. And I think her brother was, was like killed. Isn't that her main motivation that, that the empire killed her brother? Yeah. So her brother was Japanese and she's half Japanese. And so That's she's right. a really interesting character because she has the ability to blend in uh, and live amongst That's them right. in society. And she has the option of just being Britannian. And she's, yet at, she, she's at the Ashford Academy too with them. She is. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so she has to make the decision to fight against the empire when she is very capable of living amongst them. So she's, she, there's a lot of complexity to her character too. And she's really easy to root for. She's, she's very easy to love. I love Callan. I love, mm -hmm. Callan. I love her mech. I love her mech. Lelouch's mech sucks. <laughs> Callan's mech is so good. But, but, but I mean, Lelouch and Callan make such an excellent team they because do. Lelouch can be on the battlefield, like seeing what's going on and commanding. And then Callan's his bodyguard. And that works exactly. really well um, yeah. until things don't work really well. And I guess what we should mention, if you haven't seen it, so the fact that Lelouch has this power and is in control of this rebellion is unknown to anyone. Only Lelouch mm. knows that he yeah. has his power. So the people that he interacts with in his daily life kind of know him as two people. So they know him as Lelouch, the student, and nobody knows about his history. So no one knows who he actually is in terms of the Britannian empire. So they think that he is just a random Britannian citizen. Um, and so he has this relationship with people on both sides as Zero, so the, the leader of the rebellion, but also as Lelouch, the, the student. So it's it's very interesting, especially with Callan. Yeah, and they think Lelouch is just some like frivolous noble who like, he just likes playing chess and hates going to school and like, mm -hmm. because he thinks he's better than everybody else. But as Zero, the commander of the rebellion, he wears like he wears this mask that he, mm -hmm. like one thing will open if he needs to use his gears, but otherwise he wears this mask. And so that's why, you know, Suzuku doesn't know who it is either. So he does not realize that like his arch nemesis is his freaking best friend. And that is oh. so much tension, right? It maintains this tension throughout the whole show because nobody knows the actual truth. And in every episode, it, it pulls you forward. This is a really fast paced anime. Like the end yeah. of every episode makes you want to watch the next one because there's so much going on. You have Lelouch's motivation, but then also Lelouch's identity. And are they going to find out who he is? And then just the broad strokes of the fighting against the empire. Like there's so much happening all at once. Yeah, it is. It is a stressful show. And they often skip like, they often skip some time between episodes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm like, did I miss an episode? Like, like they're talking about something like that happened, you know, in between. And uh, we, you know, we weren't supposed to see it, but I'm like, did I miss something? And it is incredibly fast paced. But Patrick, do you remember like in season one, like it's fast paced, fast paced, fast paced, stop while they have the, let's try to pin <laughs> our love on students <laughs> and the cat Arthur. hero's mask. <laughs> and it's just like, all of a sudden it becomes like a teen harem anime it real does. quickly. <laughs> like for one episode, it's just like, what 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 show is this? Where didn't we just have a massacre in the last episode? Why is why is there this club day? They're taking the school? violence down. They're taking the violence down a bit. A bit. It was so tonally jarring it's to so, go. And there's and it happens in both seasons. I it know, happens, it happens twice. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in season two, I needed it because I was like, my brain is gonna explode. And then you get this very like slice of life high school episode and I was like thank god I'm not gonna have a heart attack oh and from the first episode 
from the very first episode, you realize what kind of anime this is going to be. Are they going to hedge or are they going to go for it? Because the way Lelouch uses his power the first time in the first episode, I was like, no. I was like, what? <laughs> what? I that face, not, you make that a lot when you're watching. I did not realize it was going to be this type of anime. It is that type of anime. Like, from the first episode, you're like, whoa. It is yeah. so good. Oh, like, this dude. has got the darkness of like a Joe Abercrombie novel. Like, yes, there is 100%. nowhere that they won't go in this show. We should absolutely say that. Like, if you guys like that, like, gritty, like, realism, like, you know, brutal decisions are made with really far reaching consequences, like, yeah. he is not a, like, they are not afraid to. They are not afraid to kill people. They are not afraid to kill many people. They're they're not afraid to kill thousands. Like it is. It is a dark uh, anime at times. Um, but it's also not super like gory. Like no one's getting disemboweled or anything like that. So it's not like like Helsing or it's not that dark. Yeah. And there's emotional dark. impact too. Like in lots of anime, you see people die in the thousands, but you don't see the repercussions. But the the choice is because of everything that's happening and all the characters that are involved, a lot of the deaths are really personal. So they, you really feel them. Yeah. There is a scene about two thirds of the way through the first season that guys, you understand like this, this show is phenomenal. I had to stop watching for a second because I was so unsettled by what had happened. Like I was so like, I, I was like, no, no, yeah, yeah. no. I, I, know, I know which episode they're talking about. I was, I was waiting for Sarah. I was waiting for Sarah to get to <laughs> yes. that episode. Like we're, we're talking about this in the spoiler, but like I was yeah, so yeah. unsettled that I, like I had to, like I, I, I don't think I watched any more that day. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep on this and watch more tomorrow because I do yeah. not like what happened here at it's all insane. yeah it i think insane. i was i think i was the same because patrick he he had said he was like you need to he was like i wish i could tell you which episode it was so you could record your reaction watching this he was, but then it'll kind of ruin it because you'll it be will. expecting it but he was like you yeah. need to you will know it's, and then you need to message me it's so unpredictable i, I really didn't expect that would happen <laughs> like crazy it was oh crazy. serious seriously patrick like there's no way you can predict that like yeah <laughs> there's, there's just no way it comes out of Man, yeah, it was that one was yeah. yeah. So, um, any final like non spoiler thoughts, guys? Like, if if y'all like science fiction, fantasy, even if you like anime, like again, this is a fantastic series. It has fantastic characters and incredible political intrigue. Incredible political intrigue as the Imperials, um, because there's a lot of good characters on the Imperial side. The princes and princesses mm -hmm. uh, who yeah. are you know, there's so many of them, like Lelouch's relatives, like half siblings. Um, even they are nuanced or become nuanced. Like it's, it's really, it's just really interesting. And also the, you know, the origins of Lelouch's power, like what is it? Where does it come from? Why is it like that? And just yeah. watching these chess masters move these pieces on the board and plan these strategies. Like it's some of my favorite stuff in, in the fantasy books that I read and yeah. right here in anime is just excellent. And the, the sub is fantastic. Like the Japanese voices are excellent. Lelouch's, yeah. Lelouch's voice is so deep. I'm like, yeah. in the in the sub, it's not that deep. Like it's not it's not the down here like that it is in the, in the Japanese. It's excellent. It's so good. That I will say oh, sorry. surprising to ahead. me because uh, uh sorry Sarah. Uh shit, I forgot what to say. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 uh, okay, okay, I remember now. Yeah. Uh Lulu's uh Japanese voice. Uh it is done by uh, I think the name of the voice actor is June Fukuyama. Before this show, his voice wasn't like that. So when when Code Geass appeared, I really didn't know that it is done by him. It's so good. It's so good. And also, uh, one more thing. If you, to compare it to a popular series, if you love Death Note, I think there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of things to love here if you love Death Note. Think of, think of it this way. Think of it a more empathizing Kira. Think of it that way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you're going to love it if you haven't watched this one. And oh, plus, absolutely. if you love Kaka Battle, do watch it. Yes, yes, definitely. Like he's yeah. he's he's le Lelouch is definitely less of a monster than Kida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, 
Final uh, thought? All, I, all I was going to say is that you like, trust in the story. If you start to watch it, there's going to be holes and you're going to think this is a plot hole. Why is this here? This makes it. It's not. No, no, no. <laughs> Everything <laughs> comes together so well. Yeah. It just it, they they do not hold your hand through this anime. They are allowing you to discover things about the world and the powers and the people. But everything does become clear and it comes together really well, which I think is hard to do, especially in anime where there's so much exposition and so much kind of talking out loud. Uh, I think that that Kogias does this really well. Yeah, yeah, and so if you're if you're a fan of those uh, of the anime and sci-fi that like kind of throws you in the middle and you know doesn't doesn't e expose it a lot and you have to kind of figure out uh, the world building and everything, yeah, it's great. And then again, like the just the dehumanization, how the empire dehumanizes the Japanese like constantly, like the Elevens are constantly like hoarded, like like herded around into like sectors and and you know like they they are they are literally like second class citizens. They they are sub sub imperial like the imperials are you know they're the the right to rule and then you have the 11s that are less than people it's just it's just brutal so like you understand like why they're you understand why callan chooses to fight for her people and mm -hmm. instead of when she could easily blend in with the um uh the britannians so Guys, we're going to talk about spoilers. So if you've seen the show, this is what you've been waiting for because you you <laughs> have never had anybody to talk to it about it. You have seen it. You're like, why will no one watch this? Why is everyone watching Full Metal Alchemist and One Piece and Death Note <laughs> and, Death Note. and, and <laughs> Naruto and why and and why won't anybody watch this? I'm so alone with my posters. Um, and, <laughs> that's, that's what I we felt. Are here. That's what I felt when I watched anime, like back in the day before anime. Because when I was in, you know, when I was in high school in the late '90s, like when I was watching like DBZ and Sailor Moon and yeah. um, and Project Aiko and Robot mm -hmm. Circus, like no one watched anime. Mm -hmm. No one watched anime. Same thing. No one played D and D. Like the nerds have risen out <laughs> from the darkness in the last. We decade. are here. You know what I mean? But back then, you didn't have anybody to talk to about this stuff. So we're definitely gonna talk spoilers. So please leave if you don't wanna hear them. And if you do, stay for the exciting stuff. So guys, let's talk spoilers. I don't know where we wanna start. We'll start with season one, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, see, <laughs> the scene. Of Bloody Yuffie. <laughs> the scene where freaking, they are having peace. They've got the the, the special, like, what is it? The, what, what zone is it? Like the special um, Japanese, Person's zone, the special administrative zone of Japan, the SAZ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Lelouch accidentally guesses Euphemia. Euphemia. Oh. And oh. Princess Euphemia, who who literally cares about the Elevens, like she's a good person. And, and she, convinced Lelouch, like she she brought him over. This is like it was the hardest thing to do. She brought Lelouch to the peace table. Like he's yes. like, cool, I'm gonna set down the mantle of zero. And mm -hmm. I've achieved it. I've achieved a place where like, you know, my me and my sister can live like in peace with the empire. And he accidentally biases her to hate the Japanese. And she orders their massacre while they're all in this freaking stadium. Like- What, what did Lulus actually say? Uh, it was a joke, right? So yeah. he says, like, I can't believe I was going to tell you to kill all the Japanese. And his by that point, his geas is starting to malfunction. He can't control it anymore. And so yeah. it goes off. And then she's like, okay, kill the Guys, Japanese. I feel ill thinking about it. Thinking like about that, it. that's yeah. I would that scene was so disturbing because you love Yuffie. Yes. Like yeah. you, you oh, love yeah. that, like here it is. Like here's we got peace. And the horror as as Lelouch realizes what he's done he has set up the Japanese for genocide. Like they, they're, they're gunned down by the thousands in a, in a stadium. Like they're all, it's, it's horrific to watch. It was, it is gut churning and Sarah, what was your reaction when you saw that scene? I it was it's, it's so many layers, right? It's so many kinds of horrifying. So there's the general horror of it being a massacre, and there's all these women and children and people who are looking for a better life. There is the horror of knowing that Zero is going to have to take responsibility for this, even though Lelouch didn't want it to happen. 
And then this was going to be, so Suzuku, who I guess we'll talk about after, but I agree, Alan, I was never really pro Suzuku because as we find out, he's kind of, he's got his own internal motivations for trying to absolve himself of the guilt that he feels for what he's done. And with Yuffie, he finds somebody who feels equally guilty for the horror that her family has carried out. And they're both looking to make a better world and a better impact. And he finally finds a way where he can do that. And then that is also cut off. Weren't they together? Like, yes. That's yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. Oh, I, for I forgot about the layer of horror with Suzuku. I forgot they were together. Uh, thank you for making me feel worse now. I right, so that. horrible. And they're both like quasi-suicidal. So you have Suzuku who like all he wants to do is die so that he can feel better about what he has done. And then you have Yuffie who feels, because she's so kind, she's so nice. She feels overcome with guilt about everything that her family has done and how they have dehumanized these people, which she's kind of been separate from. So she's been like the very definition of this pampered princess she's coming into area 11 thinking that it's going to be something that it's not and then she sees how dehumanized everybody who lives there is and she's immediately horrified and her whole existence and the way that she has lived her life is completely called into question and she wants to remedy that and then you have Lelouch who actually turns out to be her childhood companion she's one of the people that he loved the most in the world up there with Nunnally and so it's just like it's it's heartbreaking it's it's horrifying. Like it was just too much. <laughs> it, it it was really bad. It was really bad. Even just watching it, I mean, I was. Oh, this cannot be happening. <laughs> this can't be happening. <laughs> I, I agree, Patrick, and I can hear that. I can hear the trauma in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> it is so traumatic, uh, and uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's so bad that the event was so bad, and seeing uh, Yuffie laughing while she shot everyone it was so horrific it is horrific oh, like i just got chills when you said that patrick because it's just horrible yeah. like and in other anime like this would be kind of like a nightmare scenario where like they'll walk it back somehow in like other animes or other stories that did not happen here like, yeah. like there were because remember like that's why he jokes with her because he was he was going to set up something like this to you know like turn everyone against even more against the Imperials. But he realized that Yuffie really did want peace. So he didn't need to, but now Lelouch finds himself in a position where he has to use this tragedy that he yeah. did not want to use. And Lelouch just having to take up the mantle of zero. And after that, knowing that it's his fault, uh, but then not really yeah. his fault. <laughs> it's, it is. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, it was just so, I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. Like I've never seen anything like it. Like it's just so, it comes as such a shock. And it, you know, it comes after there's a lot of, a lot going on and we got the falling action and then it's like, okay, there's going to be peace, but you see that there's several episodes and I'm just, you know, you're wondering where it's going, but you don't think this is going to happen. And then from that point on, like it is nonstop. Like yeah. there's a tonal shift for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point on, it stops being like all the kid gloves are off. It's like they've they've taken you out of training mode. You're no longer in the tutorial, and now it's like all bets are off from that point on. It is. I remember like I think I binged the next day. I think I binged the last like four or five episodes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so freaking good. And you see the reverberations through so many of the different characters because you have Cornelia, who Yuffie was her nunnally. Like she yeah. loves Yuffie so much. So that totally changes the trajectory of her character, puts her in a totally different direction. Her motivation now becomes trying to clear Euphemia's name and find out what's happening. You have Suzuku, who now becomes like a little more bloodthirsty, a little less empathetic, who, you know, kind of falls from grace a little farther. And then you have Lelouch, who's trying to reconcile the fact that this has happened with how much he cared about Yuffie and it, it it kind of all goes off in, in various directions oh yeah like I for, I for, he has to kill her he has to he has to kill her I forgot about that part like and someone, to, there's, someone, no, there's, oh, sorry, no turning back. there's no turning back he has to do it yeah that doesn't make it easier it's so terrible <laughs> you guys are forgetting one character that's very affected by you these days. Oh God, don't even, cause I don't even want to say her name. That's Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, do you remember Nina, Alan? The glasses girl? 
the the, all, the one who becomes insane after yeah. Yuki dies. <laughs> yes. who ends up, she ends up working for Lloyd, right? In season two, she ends up working yes. for Lloyd on the mechs. Yeah, well, yeah. she works on the on the atomic bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Patrick, I did forget about insane glasses, <laughs> Nina. I will kill Zero. Like. Like she's Whoa. horrible from the beginning. She starts off racist. So yeah, she's like yeah. totally that like privileged Britannian who is completely racist, completely like sucked into all the propaganda. And she just becomes worse. Yeah. And, and, and it's so, so funny. Funny. They play on the trope though, because she's the nerdy girl that we're in normal anime supposed to feel bad for because she yes. doesn't have a lot of friends. She's super nerdy. You know, she's got the glasses and the, oh, hello. Like, she's you know, got that attitude, but she's horrible. She's she a, horrible a horrible racist. And then she becomes a horrible, like, like, I don't know, space Hitler. She's horrible. Horrible space Hitler. She's, Nina's the, Nina Einstein. Yeah, Nina Einstein, ugh. She's oh my god, her name is Einstein. I forgot about that. <laughs> With her flair. Oh my gosh, she's she's the worst. I do like Lloyd though. Like, I like Lloyd too. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd is a great character. I don't really understand. So Lloyd is Lloyd's the he is a prince also, right? Right. But he like he like he, what is he just is he just like the tech guy? Like he just gives tech to the empire and doesn't really have any interest in like because he always seems like he's not super into. I mean, he's, like the true, he's the true neutral of the royal family yeah. and of the show in general. Like he is the neutral. Him and his um, counterpart, Rakshada or whatever her name is from yes. the, the Rebels, they're both this like these just these super analytical scientists who don't really have any sort of political or moral position. They just want to make cool shit. They just want, they just want to test the tech out against each other. They want to yeah, contest exactly. the tech. They have this rivalry that we're not sure if it was romantic or not, and there's something between them from the past, but that's really all they care about is just improving their tech and one-upping the other. Oh, Sarah, I forgot about the, I forgot about the Flagia, and I just, I just looked and remember, and with the Damocles machine, we'll get to season two in just a second. <laughs> so anything on season, anything else in season one, like really, really good moment. I mean, the end, obviously, like Patrick, how'd you yeah. feel? You had to wait a year before you watched before season two came out. How did you feel about how season one wrapped up on the on the island? I don't remember the island's name, but the island I'm looking. Yeah, it's the confrontation, right? Between uh, Zero and uh, Suzaku. Yeah. And it, it was done amazingly. It's definitely very amaz amazing. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it is a brutal cliffhanger, right? <laughs> and you know, back then, I really thought there would be one more episode. So I thought, okay, that is an amazing ending. I'm going to wait for next week. Come next week. Where is the episode? <laughs> Where is the episode? Oh, it's oh ended already? No! <laughs> That's terrible. Patrick's absolutely right. Like, it ends and you're like, wait. And then the, like Sarah and I were able to go right into season two and we're like, wait, yeah. like where's the where's the episode between this? Like what is going on in season two? What happened at the end of season one? It's because aren't they on the island where like where isn't that the island that can take them up to to Britannia? Is that, is that there? The altered consciousness or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that's there. That's that's where Charles hangs out, isn't it? With his with his, his cave, <laughs> with his CC, whatever. His Vivi. Vivi, thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, at the end, like when they have the confrontation and um does does Suzuku know that Lelouch is zero prior to knocking off his mask right there, or does he just unmask him? He doesn't not know. Confirmed. Yeah, not confirmed. So basically the ending of season one was dang. Sound of the gunshot, and then it all fits to crack. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the ending. So so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but thinking about it, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, especially in reading fantasy, they hate cliffhanger, right? But I'm I'm looking at it this way: if we know like there is a definite release date for the next season or the next book, I think it's okay to do a cliffhanger. It makes Sorry. us so excite exciting for the next book. It is horrible when you do something like a dance with dragons. The ending was a brutal cliffhanger, right? <laughs> and yeah, it's it's still that way <laughs> until now. Yeah, so that's another situation, another different situation. It's gonna it's gonna stay that way, Patrick. You're never <laughs> you're never going to know. 
ever. Words are wins. <laughs> <laughs> Where words are, in fact, win. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I agree with you, Patrick. Absolutely. Like, if it's a cliffhanger and you know the next book's going to come out, that's fine. Like, that's great. That, that doesn't bother me. But if you, li- if, if you do not have uh, a date on when it's going to happen, um, exactly. then, it's, then it's frustrating. I get that. Yeah, very frustrating. Um, so, all right. So, moving into season two, it begins literally like 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 season one like Lelouch is back yeah. at school he's not like he's not zero he's, he's being going to a chess match <laughs> being a jerk like at a chess match not going to school hanging out with Suzuku's there right so is actually he, his his he no longer has a sister he has a brother that's right oh. Natalie's not there now he's got a brother named Rolo and you're like where's Natalie what the what, what the crap <laughs> Who the hell are you? Oh, and then like Callan is is no longer like she's she's a waitress at like a casino. Um, she's like a bunny waitress. That's where the the fan service comes in. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, what is going on? I was legitimately confused. I thought I missed something. I had no idea what was going on. Um, And then at the end, at the end, it's at the end of season one. I mean, it's it's at the end of episode one. You don't have to wait very long. No. Um, He's back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just turns out that he's pretending, like he's under the, um, he's under surveillance. Like they're making sure because at the, we find out later what had happened, right? Yes, it comes Charles back through flashbacks. His, Charles had changed his memory, right? Mm-hmm. Implanted memories. Stupid yeah. Charles! I hate the emperor. Why? And then, but it's it was such a good choice because that tension that you had in season one, like, are people going to find out who Zero is? Now, kind of what has taken that over in season two is, are they going to find out that Lelouch has his memories back? And every episode, he has to try to maneuver himself in a way that keeps the, the Empire thinking that he does not have his memories back while also trying to communicate with the people that he needs to communicate with. Because so Zero is back, yes. but he has to convince the Emperor or the Empire that he is not Zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was this one episode, right, where I think Suzaku gave the phone call to uh, Luluch and it was Nanali. Yes, right? where he yeah. he is like, who is this? And then Lelouch has to pretend that he doesn't know her and it's the hardest thing for him. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. And Suzaku is just staring at the back. <laughs> also, when you held your phone, all I could think of was Alan before we started this, pretending to be <laughs> Elle. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> my god you need to pick something up with you know you need to scratch one foot with your other foot now alan as you're perched I like would, a bird i would fall i love it he's like but he only operates at full capacity when he's on his feet <laughs> you can yeah. only get to 70 percent when he's sitting like a normal person anarchy anarchy <laughs> oh my god, that is so bad. That is so bad. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm rewatching Death Note, so we were making fun of Death Note before we came. Back. Yeah, that that scene. You're, you're right, Patrick. That scene is terrible because it's a trap. Like they do it to yeah. they because they, they know do. that Lelouch would never, you know, not not know Nunnally, and he. That's that's that is definitely an emotional moment. Like in this one, and in this scene, in season two, that's where we see Suzaku is not what he was in season one. Yeah. His like, descent is clear. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a super it's a strange like <laughs> uh, precipitous art. drop. Seriously, like in season one, he is, I mean, he's you know the white knight as we as as you said, like he's like the noble one fighting for um fighting for justice and trying to do things the right way. Like he's like, you know, Zero and I want like they want the same thing. Like they want peace but he just does not agree with Zero's way. And then in, he is just, he's a little unhinged in- Yeah, Yuffie's death unhinges him for sure. Yeah, and he's one of the, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Alan. Oh, I'm just saying he's one of the, he's one of the the, the round table knights or whatever. Yes, knights Uh, of round. He, what I like about Suzuku's character, is that as we find out more about him, so we find out that he is the son of the prime minister, that he killed his own father. And that's really what he's aiming for is absolution for what he has done. I don't buy any of his, this is for the greater good. I'm working up from the inside. Like he feels guilty and he wants to get rid of that guilt. And this is how he feels like he can do it. So he is, it's funny because he's supposed to be this heroic character. Lelouch is supposed to be the bad guy, but you find Suzuku doing things for 
the wrong reasons and you find Lelouch doing bad things for the right reasons. And it's such a good juxtaposition of their characters. I completely agree. And you being the psychiatrist, so if Suzuka was in your office and was like, yeah, I'm really just trying to like change things from the inside, you'd be like, that is bull. That is Get bull. <laughs> You're calling him out. I don't know if you're lying to me or yourself, but there's exactly. some lying going on here. Yeah, that's such a good point, Sarah, that Suzuku is doing is doing good things for terrible reasons, and Lelouch is doing t bad things for really good reasons. Yeah. But Yuffie's death definitely does unhinge him. He, like, he sinks lower after she leaves, which is really sad, because when you love someone, like her her goal, her motivation, she wanted the world to be a better place. And he turns into a monster in her name, which is horrible. Uh, damn. <laughs> <Patrick>. <laughs> thoughts, thoughts on Suzuku, Patrick, in season two? Uh, I'm just remembering all this. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I have a question so for both of you guys. Somebody asked me this in my Discord. Um, and I'm interested to hear your your answers. So after um, Euphemia dies, like that's part of the central mystery. So we have Cornelia who's trying to find out what happened. We now have Suzuku who knows about the Gias, who wants to know why Lelouch would do this to Euphemia. And Lelouch never tells Suzuku or anybody else that it was an accident. He just kind of, he just owns it and says, yeah, I did do that. I killed them all. And, he, and that's when his own people turn against him too. So I like I have my answer for why I think that happens, but but why do you think he didn't just say yes? I I personally, I, I don't know, this is just my thought. I think he's, he feels guilty because although technically it's not really his fault that this goes out of control, but it is still, I mean, if he weren't there, that won't happen. <laughs> I think in, in some way he feels guilty about it and he's trying to not blame it or make ex excuses. That's just from my perspective. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Adam? That frustrated me to no end. But I think it's, I think it's because he is. I think it's because he is zero, and zero cannot equivocate. Like zero cannot show indecision. Like he has to be like the decisive one, and because he because he's the leader of the rebellion. Like as as we've seen, the rebellion without zero is not super effective, and so by it's not that it's not it's not what he wanted, but he does like you say, Sarah. Like he has to own it, like right? because it's not going to do anybody any good to be like I accidentally screwed yeah. it up. Because also they don't know he has the gears at the time. Like they don't know that Zero has that power, and so he would have to reveal that if he had said, "Yeah, so I accidentally lost control of my mind control power." which also would undermine him. They're going to be like, could he lose control of his mind control power again? So also remember when they find out they had the Gias, they do not like Zero when they exactly. find out that he, because they're like, have I been serving him because I want to? Mm -hmm. Or has he been Giasing me? Like, has he been like overriding my thoughts? So that whole, that whole free will thing comes into play um, after everyone knows that he has that as well, which is, you know, makes it even harder. Definitely. And I think at the at the very end, when you find out what his zero requiem is and what his ultimate plan is, he needs to be the villain. In order for everyone to move on, they need a villain, which is the most heartbreaking part of this entire show. But is, he needs to serve that function. And what is the most villainous thing that has happened? Like, that's by far the worst gesture of the entire anime, of the entire yeah. war. So it's, uh, yeah, it's sad, though. <laughs> Very sad. It's very sad. And Nana Lee realizing what he did. Oh my god, <laughs> so emotional. So oh my emotional. god. At the very end. Yeah, at the very end, Nana Lee realizing everything that he has done for Nana Lee and the world. Oh my god, Patrick. I'm. I just got emotional. Patrick, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time, a new memory comes back for you, Alan. Patrick, stop. like literally, I'm literally about to renew my Netflix subscription and watch it again. Like, <laughs> like seriously, like, I'm gonna re like it's so. It's so good. And then I just like, again, I'm looking at the, cause it's been a year. And so I've forgotten a lot of things, but I, I just looked at the synopsis again and I forgot. How is it possible for me to forget Suzuku detonating a nuke in the middle of freaking Japan? Yes. Like, I, how, how did I forget that? Like, I'm so, I'm, so, I'm remembering Euphemia stuff. Suzuku detonates a nuke. He kills 35 million people. 
and then lies to Nunnally about it and says that they evacuated everybody and that they didn't actually do it so that she will take control of these nukes in the future and use them only when absolutely needed because Lelouch is forcing them. He's so a monster. They, they make yes. Nunnally hate Lelouch even more. And yeah, when she is the person that yeah. he's been doing this for. I completely horrible. forgot all of that. I compl he's a monster. Suzuku is a monster. <laughs> And Nina, who made it with this express purpose, like <laughs> gleefully hoping that they were going to blow everybody up to, to, to get back. Her face when you said Nina. <laughs> I know. Oh. You know, she's not uh, worse. Every time Code Geass appears uh, on the topic of discussion, I always search Nina dead. Did she die? <laughs> but she didn't die. <laughs> My brain keeps thinking that she died, but she didn't. She should have. No, yeah. rivals, rivals saves her. <sighs> I, forgot, I freaking forgot that Suzuku nuked it and then turn and then used it to turn Nunnally and it's horrible. Know, so many know, layers horrible. of horror of horror. He turned Nunnally against him and Nunnally only realized that after yeah, zero at the end step <laughs> step Oh my god. And it's funny because Nunnally is in oh, gosh, sorry, that was really loud. <laughs> I don't know if we're getting some feedback from you again, Patrick. Oh really? I don't know. I think it's just when you lean forward, Patrick. I think when you're when you're leaned back. It's when you're leaned back, it's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, when you get that final showdown, oh, we're still doing it. Let's see between um, Lelouch and Nunnally, and he's going to use his geas on her, which is like the one thing that he's been trying not to do for the entire show is never have to force Nunnally to do anything. But he wants her to give him the Damocles key, like the key to the flayas oh. to the to the atomic bombs. She says, he says, like, what is different between me and the Empire who has this kind of Damocles machine that's hovering over everybody's heads waiting to drop a nuclear bomb? And she's like, if that's what they need to hate, then they can hate that. And you can see the pain in Lelouch's eyes because he, that's what he's doing. He's becoming the thing for everybody to hate. But he knows that if it's him instead of the Empire, that people will actually have a chance at free will and at freedom. Whereas if it's the Empire, it will still just be the Britannian Empire, but everybody kind of coexisting in relative harmony underneath the Empire. And it's such a sad moment. It is one of, in a show full of sad moments, it is a heartbreaking moment. <laughs> it is incredibly heartbreaking that Lelouch has to make the sacrifice to die like and he does die like this isn't it's not one of the because you would expect like okay we're gonna arrange like a public execution death and then at the end you know they visit like some distant locale where Lelouch is now disguised and is gonna live his life like you know incognito while everyone thinks he's dead no he dies and this is so this is the theory that everybody has is that he actually inherited Charles's code Gius and that he is now immortal and that the person driving this cart at the end with Cece in the back when she's like talking to the sky and she's talking to Lelouch, they think that he actually inherited this immortality and he has to live on in perpetuity away from his family, away from everything with, like, Cece. with, this heavy, with Cece, with this same burden that she has. What? Yeah, what happened to Charles at the end? So he gets absorbed, reabsorbed into that like higher consciousness when they go in and they're going to remove everybody's free will, both Charles and Lelouch's mom, who in like plot twists of all plot twists was just as evil as Charles. <laughs> I forgot about that. Like he's been fighting this whole time, like on behalf of his murdered mother, who is a monster. Yes, who hurt Nunnally. They're the ones who hurt Nunnally because she saw it happen and is living inside the body of the pink-haired knight whose name I don't remember. I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot, little, her, name. I forgot her name already. <laughs> I don't remember her name either, but she's the one who has no memories because Charles had to remove her entire personality yeah. in order to fit Lelouch's mom in there. That... What? <laughs> <laughs> You're just bringing everything. I'm just like, what? How did I? Like, there's so much going on. Like, it's so hard to remember, like, everything. Oh, my. And it's just all coming back. Like, yeah. what? And they, they wanted, so Charles and Lelouch's mom wanted to create a world with no lies. And what Lelouch proves is that you need lies. You need that complexity of human emotion in order to have a free world and to have a world where people actually have agency over themselves. 
And it's, it's so fascinating the way that all the characters play off of each other. Like you, you see yeah. Lelouch who his Gius <clears throat> literally is controlling people. And the entire show is just this trajectory of his life going out, completely out of control. So you get this, like the layers of, of dramatic irony that run throughout Code Gius are so, there's so much. There is so much. Anya, so Anya's her name. Anya, yes. Anya, yeah. I just looked it up. I That's it. that. Code Geass done it in 50 episodes is amazing. It is it amazing. Is, yeah, and it's only 50 episodes. Yeah, like literally, I'm I'm seriously gonna start watching this, this show again. Like it's, <laughs> it's it's so bloody good. Like it's so freaking good. It's yeah, uh, do it. Do it. We haven't talked when a lot I'm about the watching. side characters. I know we talked a lot about Lelouch and Suzuku, but who did you guys like? Like who were your favorite side characters? The ones that still stand out for you after not having watched it for a while? Uh, Lloyd always stood out for me because I just kind of like the, like I liked that he wasn't really a bad guy. He's just, I mean, he's just a scientist being a scientist. You know, it's like, I mean, it's it's kind of like the, um, you know, in the, in the, in wars we've had, you know, in like the scientists are just, they're just doing what they're supposed to do for their country. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's not like the scientists particularly hold ill will or whatever. They're just doing what they're told to do. Like these people are Germans, so they're gonna you know try to figure out stuff for the Germans. These people are Americans, they're gonna try to figure out stuff for the Americans. Um, so that's what it felt like. It's just like they're kind of removed from it. They they get their orders from he gets his orders from the top, and he's like, okay, you want me to make an awesome mech? Cool. Hey, Suzuku, you want to pilot this Lancelot? Ooh, let's get to that part. Ooh, nice. Now it can't be destroyed. Right, and no prejudice. Like, he doesn't care that Suzuku's an 11. No, he, he didn't crap. Yeah. No, you're He's the best like, are pilot. are you a good pilot? Nice, let's do it. <laughs> um, so I liked, I liked Lloyd a lot. And I, I also liked Callan. I mean, she's not really a... She's, she's more like second-tier protagonist more than yeah. side character. Um, but I, I did like her. I also liked Valletta trying to struggle with... You know, she's a, she's a Britannian who then loses her memory and falls in love with Ogi, mm -hmm. but then gets her memory back and has to deal with both her feelings and her revulsion simultaneously, which is always just a, a just a cool thing to explore and, you know, tragic and everything else. So That's a good I, plot I, I also like Shirley. <laughs> Who? Think, uh, Shirley, Shirley, Shirley. Oh, Shirley. Yeah. Shirley, yeah. Shirley, uh, yes. So sad. A girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the beginning, she's just kind of like this character, you know, like, oh, he's so handsome. I love him. Blah 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 blah. But as it turns out, well, she, her love for him is really amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing, and to think that her fate ended like that. Oh god. <laughs> and it saves him. Her love for him saves his life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot about, I forgot, like, I literally forgot <laughs> about all that till you mentioned it, like, the I, I whole, don't whole just the, main, the main events, that's the main events, because, and because I was talking with Sarah, so I kind of remember them again, and Rolo, <laughs> that stupid Rolo. Rolo, I love Rolo. So, <laughs> not that I, I don't admire him as a person, um, but I, I find his character to be so tragic, like, tragic in a way that just, like, hits so hard, because they made him from the time that he was a baby they molded him into this monster who could do their killing like think about in some of the flashbacks i don't know if you remember but like you see him as a child like a little five-year-old child being sent in to assassinate people so he has had no nurturing no love no nothing and then they put him in to monitor lelouch and lelouch treats him with affection initially because he's been programmed to do that but then kind of brings him over to his side. Rolo doesn't know, but Lelouch is manipulating him. But Rolo starts to believe that he's actually receiving human affection for the first time. But he has no idea what to do with it. Like his, it's such a, a weird, twisted, jealous form of love that he wants to eliminate anyone else that Lelouch might even have the slightest bit of feeling for because he feels like it'll take it from him because he has no concept of what love actually is or what it means. And when he sacrifices himself for Lelouch, I, Patrick can tell you, I was, I was sobbing. I was crying so much just because it's so tragic. Like Rolo did horrible things. He was a monster, but a monster that somebody made, like not a monster like Nina, who yeah. chose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Lelouch doesn't actually, he doesn't actually love Rolo. Like no. he's like using him the whole time. The whole time. Like, yeah. Until which, the very last moment, he does kind of smile at him and give him like that little bit of validation, which is. Yeah. But doesn't doesn't Lelouch isn't isn't in season two when Lelouch like 
like massacres the whole lab that like created Rolo, like with all, all, and it kills all the scientists and everybody in there. Like yeah. stuff gets wild in that second season. Like people stop being like, you know what? Let's try not to kill civilians. And now it's just like, kill everybody. Let's just get every, like, just, like <laughs> Just and that's what starts everybody. to turn Ogi away from Lelouch because he's been kind of his main support in the rebellion. Yeah. And yeah. once they do that, because nobody else knows about the Gius, this secret about the Gius, and this is the thing about all of these, like all of the lies and the secrets is that it really does start to turn everybody against each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where Ogi starts having his crisis of belief. Another character I really hate is what's his name? D Detard? D I don't know how to pronounce it, but the, oh, the media guy. The like he cameraman, he's he awful. <laughs> that guy sucks. Yes, he sucks. screw that guy. Yes. He he, uh, but okay. he has. A, I mean, he covers the death at the end, doesn't he? Isn't he like, oh, Zero's dying or whatever? He, I think he dies. I think he is one of the people who doesn't make it. He dies, right? Yeah, I think he dies. Oh, good. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> But isn't he one of like the true believers? Like eventually, doesn't he become like a true believer? So he is a true believer in Zero at first because so he what he really wants is to be the person who covers these big shifts. So he mm -hmm. wants there to be this kind of ultimate godlike event so that he can be the person to bring it to the masses. And he shifts allegiance very quickly when that goes from Lelouch to his brother Schneisel. Schneisel. Yeah. Schneisel. Yeah. <laughs> Even his name. Yeah. Right. Uh, Detard, yeah. And how about uh, Orangey? The plot twist around Orangey. Freaking Jeremiah. <laughs> Who's Orangey. literally picking oranges in the last episode. He owns an orange farm. <laughs> <laughs> he actually owns an orange farm. <laughs> That's amazing. What a satisfying ending for you. <laughs> I did not like that he was back in season two after I thought he died in season one. In season I hated one. that guy. Um, but I mean, I get it. I, I also had forgotten Sarah. I forgot that Lelouch has to use his Gius on Shirley in season one. Like yes, to, to forget. I, I forgot about that because he doesn't want to. Because uh, he, I mean, I think he likes Shirley. He doesn't have time for that. Like he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He's like, look, you are so, like, not relevant to the fight for freedom and destroy and bringing down the empire. Like I didn't have time for this. And having him having to use the Gius, like that was so painful. I forgot, I forgot about Shirley. I forgot. There's so many good moments in this show. There are. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> any it final is, thoughts on the Gius? I don't have any final thoughts, but I find it interesting. I don't know why this is. I know you said you lived in Japan, Alan, but Arthurian motifs yeah. seem to pop up in so many anime. Like in this one, we have the cat is Arthur, the Lancelot is Suzaku's mech. You have the Knights of the Round, like the, the Island of, of Gawain, the Island of Gawain. Of Gawain. Yep. And why? Like, it, is that a thing? Like, our I know it's like one of the precursor legends. Like, it's one of the you know. The I think mythology. I think the Arthurian legend is just I think it's big everywhere. Like I think I mean we have so many freaking Arthurian retellings. Like I think didn't another one just come out, Half Sick and Shadows or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. we're just it, it's just it's just an easy thing to, to it's an easy thing to riff off when you need like someone who's claiming like kind of like chivalry or nobility. Like it stands in for like that chivalric uh, kingdom of of utopian prosperity. Uh, if you need. You know, if you ever need like a group of nobles, mm -hmm. just do the Knights of the Round. You know, like Final That's Fantasy easy. uses it then as one of the freaking summons. You know what I mean? Just use just use the Knights of the Round. Mm -hmm. I think it's just so steeped in the public consciousness that it's just easy to use. The, the names are really cool. Come on, Lancelot, Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> it is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, a good moment that I, I don't know if you guys remember this. This is a really random moment. We were talking about how clumsy Lelouch is earlier. So there's a scene when you find out that his maid is on his side and she has dressed up as him and she's like evading everyone. And like, it's during that um, episode you talked about, Alan, where everybody's trying to put the hat on him. And so his maid is pretending to be him. I was like, where did Lelouch become so athletic? Like, what's yeah. happening? And then you find out that it's her. She's a good character too, actually. I really yeah, like that, her. But she's like secretly like an assassin. Like a, like a, yes. I was just like, whoa. So what's her Super name? Sa agent. Sayako? Uh, it, it does begin with an S. Yeah. I don't remember. Sayako? I, I thought it was Sayako. Um, 
but maybe not. But she was, no, I like, I liked his mate too. Like, but Lelouch is just, ugh, he's the worst. <laughs> like he sucks at robots. Like stay out of the robot. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just it's just excellent. Uh, Patrick, any final thoughts on Code Geass? Any last plugs to tell people to watch it? Uh, I would say uh, there is one more thing that we haven't really discussed, and oh. it is the music. The music. I think the music in Code Geass is absolutely phenomenal. Every right. moment, every time there is a, a singing in the in the song, you know that that something pivotal just happened. Something's like, gonna go down. Like Rolo, Rolo's uh, Rolo's dad. That was. Uh, I mean. He did a lot of bad things, but it was heartbreaking. It was really heartbreaking when that. Uh, sorry, what's what's the name of the instrument for Rolos uh, harmonica or oh, music box? Uh, when the music music box started playing, I was like, "Oh no, you're not gonna make me cry." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not gonna make me cry. The music but, in the last and, episode too is really yeah. sad. Oh, when oh, when Suzaku has to step zero. I was glad to so, see that he was upset about that. Like yeah. Suzuku crying as he killed yeah. Lelouch, I felt like something had come back to their friendship. They could appreciate. Were, was Suzuku aware of like, hold on, we have a, sorry, a child just got abducted and everyone in the, everyone in the United States gets the Amber Alert. Sorry, oh, okay. please apologize. What? Oh. It's local? Someone in my county got kidnapped. Usually it's like South Florida or something. Um, but uh yeah that's terrible uh like sorry i derailed me was uh was suzuko aware like was, was suzuko in on the plot or did he just kill zero like i forget like was suzuko aware of what lelouch was doing he was aware and you get the, the hint okay. that jeremiah or orange was aware too because he let suzuko by as that's he's like right. leaping up the onto the i think they i think the three of them are the only one who knows right I think so. That's so, what made it seem like. So do you think there was some kind of reconciliation there at the end between Lelouch and, and Suzuku, like before the thing or? or I feel like that's the only thing that could reconcile Lelouch to Suzuku was that ultimate sacrifice. I think it's the only way that he could forgive him. And then he gets that absolution that he was looking for. He's like, yes, this is punishment enough. Like now I have to kill my former best friend in order and then live my life as this like vigilante that I, that I fought yeah. against. Their so their relationship and friendship like it was it it makes me so sad it's like so because sad. they grew up together they're like brothers mm -hmm. and that makes me so sad it's such a good anime it is. why are more people not talking about this anime <laughs> we keep on sighing <laughs> you need to you need to put in a timestamp so we can put a final plea for anybody who hasn't seen it I will Please. I will so so final plea okay so we're done with we're we're done with spoilers and we're gonna make one final plea non spoiler plea to please watch this show and then talk about it, like drive it into the public booktube consciousness so that everyone can talk about Code Geass now because it's so good. So Sarah, final plea for them to please watch it. Please watch it. You you cannot understand the depths of the heartbreak. Like if you want a story that is going to rip you to pieces and that is going to form the most perfect puzzle that has your favorite fantasy tropes like, you know, like Alan said, friends on opposite side of a conflict. You have characters who are actually smart, doing smart things. You have this huge exploration of morality and truth and freedom and what it means to, to have all these things, to see a completely nuanced perspective of all of the different pieces of that puzzle. And characters who are truly gray, who at times you think that is horrible and at other times you think you are doing exactly what I would do. It, it has it all. Do it watch it even if you don't think you like anime start with this one <laughs> i agree patrick i would say this uh, in, in addition to uh, what sarah has just uh, mentioned i will say this i have been watching anime since i was a kid since i was a kid i have watched more than 100 anime series that is not an exaggeration and i can easily say that kojis is in my top 10 easily say it. that's awesome it is that good it is that good that's awesome. Um, yeah, I've been watching anime since I was a kid as well, but not as not as I'm not nearly as well versed as as Patrick. I just watched the same shows. Like I've seen, I think I've seen Fushigi Yugi about like 18 times because I had the VHSs, and I'm like, Tamahome, 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 Miyaka, shut up. I cannot forget his name. Tamahome. Ever. You can't, Patrick. It's said about Burned 40 times every episode. Tamahome. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Patrick, I'm so glad that you've seen it and also understand my agony. Um, but it's it's so good. Patrick is absolutely correct. Like it is it is it is so so good. It's it's absolutely brilliant. It's got and to add on to the tropes, revenge story. You'll get some here comes the cavalry moments. Mm -hmm. Like it's just it's ugh, there's you get some MacGuffins. You get some like magical like weird like what's going on stuff like dropped in the middle of of the anime to figure out what's going on. A lot of Inmedius race. It's makes you think and it will also make you weep multiple times and it is it is it is not a predictable show at all you think you know where it's going i promise you don't you don't it is it is incredible incredible characters like i wish you know i want more i want like they should i don't know they should write characters like that in in fantasy and i would read it instantly it's just so good it's um quite rare to find characters like this in books. absolutely <laughs> So please watch it. Um, and for those of you who have seen it, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this has been super fun. Patrick and Sarah, thank you guys so much for talking about the show. Like I've been waiting a year to talk about the show. Someone, I'm so glad, Sarah, you were like, yeah, I'm watching Code Geass. I'm like, what? <laughs> we must talk. <laughs> what? How did I not know this? Code Geass is so good. And yes, if there's, I guess if people have other underrated animes that they think are great for sci-fi fantasy fans, let us know. Maybe we've seen them and we can discuss Yes, them. or, you know, if we have, I'm, I'm certain Patrick has seen them, but if like Sarah and I haven't, <laughs> seen, them, haven't seen them, <laughs> like we will watch them and, you know, maybe we can come back and talk about them. So mm -hmm. thank you guys for joining us. If you if you are not already subscribed to Patrick and Sarah, you're definitely probably already subscribed to Patrick. Like Patrick is like, he's the sci-fi fantasy the guy. <laughs> Like, you know, he's, if you have, if you have been on Goodreads, you know, Patrick, like Patrick is literally, he's read and reviewed every book that has ever been written. Um, no. Some that haven't been written yet. Some that haven't been written yet. Yes. Him and him and Tiffany and dying are vying for, for, for immortal control of, of who has read all the books. Uh, and then Sarah reads uh, her channel the link below as well. You should definitely be subscribed to Sarah. Um, but yeah, this is, Thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun. And guys, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. Hopefully we'll get to do this again. See ya.